Right, and with uh, Warrington's interim chief executive Stephen Broomhead for our annual roundup of the year. Uh, Stephen, the first question I'd like to put to you, when you came back in as interim chief executive in, in June of this year, it was meant to be for a six-month period, and you, you're on a process to find a, a successor to fill the uh, role left by Diana Terrace. You're still here six months on, you've done your due process, and you've not found a successor. What's the next step? Well, we've placed a national advertisement, about 34 people applied for the post, Gary, and... Uh, following a very extensive two-day assessment centre process. The councillors, not me, decided that uh, they've not got an outstanding candidate they could appoint. It's always a brave decision when you go through a process you don't appoint. Uh, that means, I think, for me, I'll be here for the foreseeable future. It's nine years since I did this job. Many things have changed, particularly around the resource envelope which is available to the council. You have to innovate and stand on your head while scratching all the time to make sure the money works in a different way for the, for the town. But I'm enjoying the job and uh, I'll be here for the foreseeable future. But the post will be re advertised in 2013 and uh, I'm sure we'll find the outstanding candidate the council wants. Do you feel the package that's been put together now, which is less than what the predecessor was on, has had any bearing on the, the standard of the candidate? Uh, no, not really, because if you look at what's happened in the market with posts in the public sector, in the main, there's remuneration packages have fallen in line with public expectation and the taxpayers' interest. So I don't think that was a factor at all, no. You, you've mentioned the foreseeable future. I mean, that could be any period of time. I mean, personally, would you like to become the full-time chief executive? No. Uh, I'm doing this job on a part-time basis. It's very nice to be asked to come and do the job on a part-time basis for a short period of time. It's not been in my life plan that this would be a permanent post. The hope to be able to move the post to someone else as quickly as we can in 2013 or 14. But these things do take time, so just wait and see. OK, well, some of the issues which have been going on at the town hall since you came back, one of the big areas where there's been a, a lot publicised and it's still ongoing are the issues with the planning department. We had the incident where the records were de destroyed, and more recently we've had the valuation problem where the, it was value, a piece of land was valued at £44,000 and then later sold on with planning permission for nearer £350,000. People still think there are issues with, with your planning department. What steps are you taking to sort of get the public's confidence back in it? Well, I think <coughs> planning department's always easy need for people to raise concerns with. It's a very busy town because we've got a lot going on in Morris in terms of inward investment and, and planning applications. And uh, certainly from my point of view, I want to absolutely make sure that we do have an improvement plan in place, that things are being done properly. I personally looked into the records issue, the destruction of those records. QC produced a report. As far as I'm concerned, matters have now been put to bed on that and we now move on. Lessons have been learned about how we keep the records. As regarding the piece of land that was sold, none of this was on my watch, of course. I want to make sure that that due process has been followed in the right way. There should have been a clawback clause in terms of the sale of land and any additional money that was made by the owner of that land. I shall make sure that we've learnt all the lessons. Sometimes it is easy to criticise the planning department. It's a very busy department. I'm absolutely convinced we've got really good professional people there. They're making really good decisions. And just to get the occasional rogue decision, if you make a decision in planning, it's often controversial. And you know, we've had a number of decisions that have been controversial. But I'm certain we've got professional people and we're discharging our services in a very professional way. I mean, one of the questions that keeps coming back is why people's heads haven't rolled over some of these decisions. Well, people left, Gary, when the uh, people left the council and left since. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a live night to the long knives. Those records were destroyed. There's been a very thorough investigation, a learning process, an improvement plan. QCs have been involved. I've had a look at it, coming in with a fresh pair of eyes. This is all happening in 2006, 2007. As far as I'm concerned, we now do have to move on. You don't feel as though there was any criminal element to what's Absolutely happened? Absolutely not. OK. Right, moving on, one of the other issues that always revolves around Warrington, which we're always reporting on Warrington worldwide, are the, are the traffic and highway issues in Warrington. One of them earlier this year, which I think did happen under your watch, was the incident at Bridgefoot where the lane markings were changed basically overnight without any warning and created total chaos. Uh, can you explain how that happened? Well, I did a very thorough and detailed report on the reasons why those mistakes were made. The mistakes were made. 
and thank you Gary for pointing those mistakes out very quickly. As soon as we realised there was the lane markings had been altered, we did take very quick action to put matters right. I mean obviously people will comment on things like that. I was not pleased because the reputation of the council is often judged by the way we do those things or don't do them correctly. But we reacted quickly, um, we put matters right, we apologised and uh, I did a very thorough and detailed report which I gave a copy to you. Uh, so that people could know that we were taking these things very seriously you know, opening up and uh, operating in a very transparent fa fashion and manner. People keep asking the question, who is it that runs the council? Is it the elected members or the officers? No, well, it's a partnership. Uh, ultimately, it is the councillors who make the decisions. Uh, they take their decisions based on best advice and intelligence that comes from the officers. But uh, I, I don't run the town. The, the leader of the council ultimately is the person where the book stops. But Terry O'Neill and myself work very closely together. So actually it is a partnership. It is the councillors who are in charge. Yeah. So when councillors say they knew nothing about the, the road works and the markings being changed and everything, and the, it's made as an officer decision, is, is that a breakdown in the partnership? Yeah, it's a breakdown in communication. I think a similar issue with the planning records, actually. Councillors probably didn't know, anything, didn't know anything about that either. Um, it was a breakdown in communication. These things were preceded my arrival here. Uh, I want to make sure we've got a very good communication model within the council, good relationships with all the elected members, whether they're in charge of the council, Labour, Labour, Liberal, Democrat or Conservative. It matters we're in a partnership. And in the case of the, uh, the road markings, that was another example where there was a breakdown in communication. I don't think the council did know anything about it. OK, one of the other main issues that's always going on in Warrington are bin collections. People really get worked up about the bins. You're moving towards a fortnightly collection, uh, which obviously saves a lot of money. But, I mean, over Christmas we've got the incident where you're suspending the blue bins at the busiest time of the year with everyone's wrapping paper and the bins are going to be overflowing. Is that a sensible move? I didn't know about that, Gary, until you just told me and I'll look into that matter. But clearly moving to uh, fortnightly collections, we, we've now just agreed we'll go out for consultation in the new year about that. And we'll see what people have to say about it. I mean, I think it's round about 95% uh, of local authorities in the UK all have now fortnightly bin collections. Uh, Eric Pickles, the Secretary of State, has other views that he thinks bins should be collected on a weekly basis. But we, we are likely, I think, to move to fortnightly bin collections. That will be managed very carefully. But we'll make sure that we listen very carefully to what people say in the consultation before we make that decision. Yeah, blue bins need emptying over Christmas, Steve. I'm sure they do, Gary. <laughs> OK, final question. Have you got a positive message for the people of Warrington? It's been a tough year in the economy. We've had several years on the bounce where it's been really tough. There's still talk of more spending cuts. Have you got a positive message? Yeah, I mean, the town's doing well in terms of the economic and social fabric of the town. We're seeing new investors coming into Omega. Despite the fact we've had a 30% cut in our budget, we're still delivering, I think, pretty good frontline services. Yes, occasionally we make the odd mistake. You pointed a couple out to me today. But I think, you know, we're going for this town works well. It's a good partnership town. And actually, if you look at what's happening in other places, I'm pleased I'm in Warrington, not other, not other parts of the northwest. Unemployment is falling, and you know, we're all moving forward together. So I think uh, 2013 bodes well for the town overall. Okay, Stephen, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you.